Yeah, uh, so good afternoon all. Uh, so after the excellent uh, talks in the morning discussing uh, latest cutting edge DFT technologies, uh, I'll be taking you through what is more of a case study uh, regarding a pattern inflation problem that we uh, saw in a real project uh, and how we uh, uh, explored uh, the Tesson point insertion uh, unleash the capabilities of uh, test point analysis in test and tool uh, and harness those using efficient selection and sharing of test points and we're able to tame the dragon of uh, test point inflation. Uh, so the story will unfold like this. So I'll take you talk briefly about the pattern problem itself. Uh, then I'll take you through the root cause process. Uh, solution and finally some of the implementa implementation challenges that we faced uh, 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 that we overcame eventually using uh, efficient selection and sharing of test points. Uh, so as a quick introduction, uh, I think Ajain uh, from NXP briefly mentioned on this test point already and also emphasized the importance of the test points in terms of uh, reducing the ATPG pattern count and improving test coverage. So test point insertion is basically uh, a DFT technique uh, which uh, in which we initially identify the hard to control and uh, hard to observe nodes in the design and intercept them using additional test, test circuit uh, uh, test, test point circuitry logic which consists of uh, these clouds which which look like a combinational gates and uh, test point registers in 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 terms of uh, control points or, or the observe points uh, and while doing so, we have to make sure that uh, the area penalty that is incurred uh, on account of this uh, extra test uh, logic circuitry is kept minimal. Uh, so the one of the ways to do that is uh, sharing of test points in the sense that multiple of these test points can uh, feed to a single observed flop or a single control test point register can, can get broadcast to multiple of the test points. Uh, so just just to give you a quick uh, introduction to the in-house flow that we use for a test point insertion. Uh, so all of the activity regarding the test point analysis, the identification, uh, the stitching of the register happens at gate level. Uh, the test point analysis and identification is done by the Tessential tool, whereas the, the stitching of this test point register in the scan chains ha happens through a third party synthesis tool. And uh, to, for, for enabling the sharing of test points, we have certain in-house scripts which enable uh, us to add this uh, logic using which we can uh, share multiple test points. So by default, uh, we add currently only observer type of test points. Uh, uh, we don't have control type of test points enabled due to legacy reasons. And the, the default test point target that we are using is basically uh, targeting both Elvis test coverage as well as EDT pattern count. So it, it's also called as a hybrid uh, test point target. And the, the base uh, test point setup that we have uh, calls for 5,000 observed type of uh, test points as the default setting. So uh, talking about the problem itself, so we were working on a subsystem uh, which gets kind of reused across multiple projects. Uh, and it, in a certain uh, project that we're working on, codenamed LA. Uh, uh, compared to the previous versions of it, we're seeing uh, two, more than 2x uh, pattern count inflation. So if you see previous uh, versions of the, of the project, we're having uh, less than 20k patterns, but this, uh, the latest project we were uh, working on uh, had the pot pattern count shoot up to more than 46k. And, and this was obviously not acceptable uh, uh, for the production and test engineering as and uh, test tape out. So it was a tape out risk for us. Uh, so we also, uh, we, we tried the usual known suspects uh, in terms of trying the conventional methods of uh, tweaking the tools uh, to see if any of these uh, result into pattern count saving. So we tried options like turning up the uh, clock restrictions, bypassing the EDT, uh, changing the test, uh, the, the target type for the test point uh, analysis. But as you see in the third column, uh, the pattern count uh, never really yielded uh, better results. So this made us think that this was a 
little more complex pr uh, complex pro problem to solve uh, and uh, this is code uh, which which echoed the situation where we were in uh, so we knew the problem of pattern inflation uh, and to fight this problem we had to now step back and know ourselves and knowing ourselves in this case was uh, understanding understanding the complexity that was involved uh, so just to give you a glimpse of it, uh, this subsystem that we were working on had uh, 5,000 key uh, flip-flops and uh, 19 million uh, faults that were spread across uh, hundreds of uh, multi-level of hierarchies. Uh, there were also 38 OCC-based clocks and four power domains and uh, multiple clock and analog PLL macros. So there were a bunch of uh, things and multiple bases to cover before we could uh, understand the root cause of the problem. Uh, so as a next step, what we did was we looked at the Tessent uh, test compress ATPG locks. Uh, we plotted uh, the test coverage versus the pattern count. Uh, and interesting uh, uh, thing emerged that to cover 96.10% of the coverage, uh, the tool took only like 15K patterns, but to gain the additional 2.34%, the tool had to generate 32K patterns. So that kind of uh, prompted us, you know, there is something there is something problematic when the tool is uh, trying to cover this last 2.34% uh, of test coverage. Uh, so, so to debug, we tried some sort of checkpointing. Uh, in the test and test compress tool, there is a facility to uh, set the ATPG limit for the test coverage. So, so we issued this command uh, to uh, limit the test coverage to 96. And then we deleted all the faults in the tools dictionary. And, and then whatever was remaining, those were the faults for the target, uh, for the target uh, hierarchy. Uh, so what we did was for the remaining faults, we ran uh, pattern generation in, in a steps of say, uh, 192 patterns first, then 1,000 patterns and 5,000 and so forth. And in each of this pattern interval, we would write out uh, the list of detected faults. And and then we use some sort of, some, uh, sort of shell scripting uh, to find out, uh, you know, is there any pattern in this in the faults that are getting detected? So the interesting thing that that emerged was, uh, if you see on this side. Uh, most of the faults that were getting detected were from a single hierarchy called uh, inst underscore riff. Uh, so all of the faults that, the majority of the faults that were uh, getting detected were part of uh, this specific hierarchy. So that made us think, you know, there's something wrong with this hierarchy, uh, which is uh, leading to this pattern inflation. So to deep dive, uh, we set up a couple of experiments. Uh, so in this, in the first experiments, uh, test and, uh, in the test and test compress tool, we uh, added no fault uh, on the specific hierarchy, which was uh, problematic. Uh, so when, when you issue add no faults, tool will not target any faults on the specific hierarchy. And we're pleased to see that uh, the pattern count was only like uh, 11K patterns. Uh, uh, if, if we did the vice, vice versa, meaning we add faults only on the specific hierarchy, mm -hmm. uh, which was problematic, the pattern count shot up to 52k pattern and that kind of confirm our suspicion that uh, this is the problematic hierarchy that we need to go after uh, so so far we uh, we knew uh, where is the problem uh, but to to understand uh, uh, why this is a problem uh, we took uh, some sample faults from the hierarchy and uh, what we came across was uh, these interesting circuit structures. Uh, so if you see on the left-hand side, uh, there are these single source flops, uh, which are fanning out into multiple branches and then eventually reconverging uh, after multiple levels of fan out uh, into these gates. So if you think about uh, detecting faults at this AND gate, uh, the A input of it uh, eventually traces back uh, through all of this combo to this to this uh, source flop, and even the B input of this uh, AND gate again eventually goes back to the same uh, source flop. So if a fault detection requires setting up different values on this AND gate, uh, that would not be possible in a single pattern. 
uh, and that's what this tool was uh, uh, struggling with in terms of uh, pattern generation. Uh, so so we, so so far we root cause the problem. So so how how did how do we uh, solve this problem? So based on our circuit understanding, we thought uh, the problem is due to hard to control circuit nodes. Uh, so what we did was we we tried a, a experiment with five thousand uh, control test points, and uh, we, we are getting a very good results, ha uh, having the pattern count reduced by uh, seventy percent. So. Uh, only 12k uh, patterns were enough to uh, get similar coverage. And uh, what was interesting was uh, the tool actually. Uh, when you look, when we looked at the the kind of test points, control test point that tool had uh, inserted, uh, they were on the exact same type of logic that we had uh, sus suspected uh, to be the root cause of the pattern inflation. So if you see, this was the same AND gate I that I was talking about, and the tool has uh, gone and understood this logic and inserted all these uh, AND or R types of control points in it. So, so far so good. So we know the problem, uh, we have the solution, but can we go and implement it? Uh, tur turns out uh, there was few uh, roadblocks before we could implement. Uh, one of them was uh, there was a uh, uh, feedback from the PD uh, physical design uh, that they were having severe congestion in, in this uh, in the in the block that we were working and as a part of overall exercise to cut down on this congestion uh, we had to reduce our number of test points from uh, 5k to 3k uh, also the control uh, point insertion was not widely used uh, in the company and we had to discuss and take sign off from multiple stakeholders. Uh, and also the final solution had to be uh, automation friendly. Uh, we cannot do something out of the flow. It has to be able to integrate in the push button flow. So this, these roadblocks gave us uh, three objectives. Uh, one is the localization, uh, meaning the test point should be, uh, should be placed only in the target hierarchy, which is causing problem so that it doesn't degrade the other uh, other hierarchies in terms of congestion and the problem e even if there is a problem in future it, it gets contained within the target hierarchy and it, it doesn't get get a widespread uh, effect so the next uh, objective that came across from this challenge was uh, minimization of the uh, test points uh, meaning we, we had to keep the test point as minimum as possible so that we ca we incur uh, the least area penalty uh, and finally, uh, the solution has to be uh, automation friendly. It has to be uh, integrated in the existing push button flow. Uh, so, so how uh, we went uh, accomplishing this uh, objective was so first objective of localization. Uh, so. so in the default flow, uh, uh, compared to the default flow, we went with a two-pass uh, test point analysis. Uh, so, so the, at the first step, we go to the test point insertion context, uh, add faults uh, across all the subsystem as usual, uh, then uh, set the target for TP analysis of uh, 2K of the points and uh, zero control points initially. Uh, so this will give, give us the, the default uh, observed points that we uh, generate as usual. Now coming to the uh, the problem uh, solution for the problem. Uh, in the, in the next pass, we add faults. We, we issue a command with add faults uh, and specify the the target hierarchy and then hyphen instance. And after that, we uh, we uh, issue the command to uh, to tool to analyze the the test points with uh, zero observation points and one uh, k control points. And finally, we write down the uh, final list of uh, test points. So with this approach, we're pleased to see that uh, the tool was able to restrict itself uh, when it generated uh, the control points. Uh, so so here is a snapshot of uh, uh, the test point report that uh, tool generated. And as you can see in this column that all of the control po type of test points that were generated were within the instarif uh, target hierarchy.
So this helped us uh, meet the objective of localization. Uh, coming to minimization, to keep the so to keep the uh, the count of test points minimal, uh, we had to reach uh, optimal number of uh, uh, test points, right? Uh, so we did what was a kind of a TPA profiling experiment. Uh, so we enabled different number of uh, test points, as you can see in this uh, second column, uh, and uh, noted the corresponding test coverage and the pattern count that we see. So for example, when we enabled zero control test points, uh, the pattern count was 48K. Uh, when we uh, enabled 320 test points, the pattern count got reduced uh, significantly to 26K. And somewhere around 1K uh, test points, we got a acceptable pattern count of around uh, 22K. So, so this helped us uh, to find out what is the optimal number of test points that we can go for. <coughs> Uh, so further to minimize our area penalty, uh, uh, we looked at the control point sharing. Uh, so we ran different different experiments uh, by changing the settings for sharing of the test points. Uh, so with the original run where there is no test point sharing, we we, ha we have around uh, 45k plus pattern count. Uh, then uh, uh, incrementally we we increase the control point per source setting. Uh, so, so at about eight control point uh, sharing shared per source flop, uh, we we had hit a sweet sweet uh, sweet spot of uh, around 22k patterns. So uh, you can see in this diagram that uh, there is this single uh, control point flop which gets broadcasted to eight of these uh, uh, control test test points. So that really helps to reduce uh, the the uh, area. If we had not shared this uh, uh, test point, then you would have to uh, add a separate flop for each of these uh, test points. So finally, uh, uh, the results. So we're uh, able to achieve all these targets uh, using the test and uh, analysis capabilities and our two two pass uh, <coughs> test point uh, generation process. Uh, so one uh, k control point where. Uh, the uh, test points were selected based on the TPA profiling experiments, and uh, around uh, eight control points per source was chosen as a optimal number of uh, sharing for pattern count reduction. So this is the setting we went with, and finally, with all the optimal settings, we were able to achieve 54% of pattern count reduction. <coughs> so finally, uh, takeaways. So none of this work would have been possible uh, if the test, and, uh, test, test insertion was not as highly effecti effective as it was. Uh, so it was really uh, brilliant in terms of tool, uh, you know, the way it added the test points at the exact uh, precise, precise location, uh, which we had suspected through our manual, manual process. Uh, that was really brilliant uh, and as you would have seen in the last slide, just with uh, 320 uh, control points, the pattern count was reduced almost by 45, 50%. So uh, a really a great uh, effectiveness of the tool. Uh, also, the test and test compress uh, commands really helped us in terms of uh, root cause and uh, analyzing the faults through which we could identify the root cause of the, uh, the problem. And finally, uh, the second takeaway I would say is, uh, as a DFT engineer, we uh, sometimes overlook some of the design aspects. But as you, as you would have seen in this case, uh, having the design knowledge and the design insight uh, sometimes is uh, very advantageous to us in terms of guiding uh, these powerful tools uh, so that we can meet our project objectives. Yeah, so that's all. Uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.